Let's go to our special guest. It's a guy I like to call Double M. Double M. Matt Murdock from I forget Podcast that again? Winterfell. As he's guys, you are really going to enjoy this. This is a segment on the music of Jonathan Strange and Mr. Norrell. This is Matt, and I hope you know that a lot of us are enjoying your reviews of Jonathan Strange and Mr. Norrell. I think that this series is one of the funnest times I've had in summertime television. And I know that the three of us have communicated a little bit over Twitter about the music in Jonathan Strange and Mr. Norrell and how you guys have compared it a little bit to the like the Harry Potter thing. And I would actually say that musically speaking, that's fairly close because John Williams in the original score, I think it was John Williams, uh, did a lot of things that were very conventional for what we think of as magic in terms of scoring the magical side of things and I feel like the composers here have done so as well and there's two key elements that I want to focus on in terms of magic and and why certain musical things sound magical or help us to get into that magical frame and the two key things that always seem to ring through as being kind of magical to us as viewers are the instrumentation that is used and the meter In which it is placed the time signature now as far as the instrumentation goes bell percussion is one of those things that really draws your attention and make places you into kind of an otherworldly place a magical place I'm talking about uses of glockenspiel uh, for instance or even sometimes harp if plucked or if if used properly can create a magical kind of experience. And we hear harp used a lot in this show, and we hear glockenspiel used a lot in this show during magical portions of the episodes. Now, as far as time signature goes, three-quarter time, or the waltz time, is often associated with magical things. And I think if you go back to the romantic period of composition, and I'm talking like Tchaikovsky, Wagner, uh, those kind of composers... That was where it was really established because we started to get these huge ballets and operas and tales of magical places where composers needed to convey something magical happening or whatever. As far as instrumentation goes, I can certainly cite the Sugar Plum Fairy uh, in Tchaikovsky's The Nutcracker. Uh, Listen to the instrument that is playing the main melody at the top of that. Uh, and of course it's a sugar plum fairy that's kind of magical right because Claire is in a different place Um, and the waltz time is often associated with various ballets and various operas where magical things are happening within those contexts Um, I can't really cite one right off the top of my head uh, but I know that I've heard it in those kind of things so I thought what we would do is look at some of these clips, at least in the first two episodes, and decide if my theory holds up. And I'm going to present you the very opening scene from the pilot episode as an example, because when Segundus is trying to do magic, we hear a lot of glockenspiel and harp. And then when he goes outside and we see Childermas, uh, and then Childermas is giving the narrative about the whole thing about magic and how it has been away from the society we have moved into a waltz type tempo one two three one two three or uh something similar to that speed i'm not sure if i have the speed exactly right but take a listen to this first clip that i have for you
your books, sir. Nice to you. Some years ago, there was in the city of York a society of magicians. Again, you have the glockenspiel and the harp while Segundus is trying to give us magic. And then you have that waltz tempo as we get more into the introduction of what is happening in England by Childermas. Now, you might say, well, there's some times where we don't get either of those really with Jonathan Strange in this first episode. But that is because in this first episode, there is a good portion of the episode where Jonathan Strange doesn't even know that he's a magician. Right? And so our introduction to him, there's no glockenspiel present. There's no three-quarter time present. Instead, we get this kind of almost lone rangery kind of da-da-dun, 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 which reminds you of horse galloping. It was very cute of uh, the composers to put that in there. But unlike our introduction to Mr. Norell, because remember when Segundus and Honeyfoot find Norell at his home at Hurtview Abbey, what we find is basically a restatement of what we heard at the beginning. There, are, There's a, a waltz theme presented as Childermas is leading them through to Norell's library. And there's glockenspiels being played uh, when they first walk in there. So it's essentially all of those magical elements are there for Norell because he's already a practicing, what is it, a tolerable, practical magician. So... With Strange, there is no such notion. And here is this clip to show you that there's no glockenspiel or three-quarter time present. Instead, it is four-four time. Well, if that is how the first magician behaves, I dare not think what the second will be like. The Lord be with you. Now, here is something that I love what the composers did. When Jonathan Strange performs magic for the first time, you still have the staccato string, that that da-da-dun, da-da-dun thing going on. But it changes to three-quarter time as he's performing magic for the first time. Take a listen. Then I draw a circle on the mirror like this. And then I quarter the circle. Jonathan, where did you get this nonsense? From the man under the hedge. Henry, do at least try it. That That is not your ceiling. So that motif, that's what we call those, those kind of little rhythmic or melodic elements that repeat over and over, that da-da-dun, da-da-dun, that is still retaining part of Jonathan Strange's character 
that we know him as at, in the first time we meet him, and yet it's transitioning into the fact that he can perform magic by using that motive over a three-quarter time signature as opposed to a four-four time signature. So that is excellent. And then finally, I want to go to the Lady Pole episode, that's episode two, when Jonathan Strange and Mr. Norrell speak or are introduced for the first time and Jonathan Strange performs a little magic trick with the, the placing the paper in the mirror and the reflection out in our world. I love the fact that as he performs it, you get the glockenspiel stuff. And then when him and Norrell start talking about magic, we go into a three-quarter waltz. Mr. Norrell, let the man do his trick, sir. Nothing would give me greater pleasure. This is one of my own spells. I do understand what you mean. I have taken the liberty of drawing up a plan of study for the So, again, in conclusion, the use of bell type percussion or harps as instrumentation and the use of the three quarter time signature is what gives us a magical feel, what helps give us a magical feel. And it's something that's been done for oh, what? Almost 200 years now, I guess. Well, 150 years, let's say 150 years for sure. Um, it's something that's been done often by composers in Western composition. Eastern composition is a whole different thing, of course. But what we most associate film scoring with, of course, is Western composition. So I hope I've demonstrated my theory correct in a way that the music can add just as much to the magical feel of a film as any other element of it. And thanks for taking the time to listen to this, guys. Bye.